We had a terrible mass shooting in Nashville the other day. Of course, it became a giant national story. There were three kids who died in, in the elementary school, three adults who died. And, um, you know, the shooter happened to be trans. So that led to the right to really lean in on the anti-trans position that they have, uh, you know, and of course, it's already, this is already out of the news, right? I mean, this is the United States of America. So if you have a mass shooting, it could be the worst one ever, right? And it's still probably only going to be in the news for four days, maybe five. Um, this one's already gone. But in the wake of the shooting, there was a really interesting exchange, kind of a screaming match, although really only one of them is screaming, uh, in the hallway here between Jamal Bowman, Congressman Jamal Bowman, and Congressman Thomas Massey, who, by the way, for those of you who don't know, is super libertarian. Okay, so this was in the wake of the shooting. Let's listen to their back and forth, and then I'll break it down for you. They're all cowards. They won't do anything to save the lives of our children at all. Cowards. Pressure them. Force them to respond to the question, why the hell won't you do anything to save America's children? And let them explain that all the way up until election day of 2024. Let them explain it all the way up to election day of 2024. They're freaking cowards. They're gutless. They're not here. I'm talking about gun violence. You know, I'm talking about gun violence. Carry guns. Okay. <laughs> Just to respond to the substance of this for a second. First of all, um, I'm a stepdad now. I've seen teachers. You know, I, I know the, the, the kids' teachers. They don't want to be carrying guns, bro. It turns out you get into the teaching profession if, like, you're very child-oriented and nurturing and you like educating people and taking them through a process. Like, these are the types of people who are attracted to being a teacher. It's not the same kind of people who, you know, like, would be attracted to being a soldier or a policeman or the idea that it's like, well, you're going to force these teachers to be armed when they don't even want to be armed. That's just part of their job that you need to know how to kill a deranged mass shooter. So, I mean, it's just a freaking category error. It's just, and now, by the way, his point also, he talks about how there, there's never been a school shooting in a place where the teachers are armed. Well, my guess is that's because there's like, what? Maybe seven schools in the country where teachers are armed and they're all in a place with a population of six people? Like, that's not a good fact. And might I say, there's been a number of mass shootings at schools where there's an armed guard at the school. In fact, I read a statistic earlier today which said there's actually been more shootings at uh, schools where there's an armed guard than at schools where there's not. Now, by the way, I'm not saying I think like the, the armed guard causes the shooting, no. But it just happens to be the case that that's not a panacea. That doesn't solve everything. To have an armed guard doesn't solve everything. Now, I'm not... If there were some sort of a deal where we do gun reform and turn around and have like a guard in every school, I think I'd vote for that compromise. I'm no problem with that. But just understand, it is not a panacea at all. And so this point for Massey is just a terrible point. More guns lead to more death. More guns lead to more death. Look at the data. You're not looking at any data. You're, you're, you're carrying the water for the gun lobby. Look at the data. More guns lead to more deaths. Guns. States that have open carry laws have more death. States that have open carry laws have more death. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That, that's a, what, calm down. Children are dying. Nine-year-old children. The, the solution is not arming teachers. Have you ever worked in a school? Have you ever worked in a school? By the way, Jamal Bowman, I believe he was a principal. So, you know, he's familiar with, with working in a school. Have you ever worked in a school? Have you ever worked in a school? It's a yes or no question. Have you ever worked in a school? You will not answer my question. Don't stop and talk to me. Okay. Okay. So there's the gist of it. Uh, by the way, Massey just keeps repeating the same point over and over. There's never been a mass shooting in a school where all the teachers are armed. 
We already explained why that's a terrible, <laughs> dumb thing to say. Uh, but let's get to the, the core of it here. I have no problem with people who say, look, I believe in the Second, Second Amendment. I believe in gun ownership. And I believe in it as a matter of principle. See, that's a fair position. Because that's just like, you know, hey, it's a cultural thing. It's part of this country. I want to be able to have a gun. So I believe in the Second, Second Amendment regardless of the consequences, right? Like, that's a fair position because it's an honest position. What I do have a problem with is the people who are either lying or aren't lying but are just wrong and are not familiar with the data when people argue, hey, more guns actually makes us more safe. More guns equals more peace. That is objectively, verifiably, provably untrue. Provably so. So I'll just give you one example here, but I could have pulled up any of a million charts. So this is rates of firearm homicides per 100,000 uh, population. And this is the U.S. and other um, high-income countries. And you can see we are way above and beyond everybody else. Chile, Canada, Portugal, Italy, Greece, Belgium, France, Sweden, Netherlands, Australia, Saudi Arabia. Uh, that says. Chechnya, okay, Spain, <laughs> Taiwan, Germany, Poland, United Kingdom, Republic of Korea. Like, we just blow them out of the water. So the fact of the matter is, and it doesn't matter what, like, you think, what you feel about this. It doesn't matter, like, your feelings on this. More guns does lead to more gun deaths. There are more guns, there will, in turn, end up being more gun deaths. It is what it is, right? It just, it is what it is. If more guns equaled more peace, the U.S. would already be the safest country in the world. We'd already be the safest country because we have more guns than we have people. But that's not the case. It's actually the exact opposite. We have more gun deaths. Now, again, I want to reiterate. You can make the argument, I'm in favor of gun rights as a matter of principle. Like, I think it, you should have a right to own a gun and... That's the end of it, regardless of the consequences. Because that's like saying, I don't know how many car deaths there are every year, right? But it's like saying, I believe you have a right to own a car and drive whatever speed you want and not be you know, burdened by uh, onerous traffic laws. I believe it is a matter of principle, regardless of the consequences. So even if it leads to 200,000 deaths a year or whatever, it's like, that I just view that as a, the price for freedom, effectively. You can make that argument from principle. You can. It's honest. But, you know, I think most people would probably fall somewhere in the middle, at least in the context of the U.S., because guns are part of our culture, Second Amendment, etc. Most people, I think, would fall somewhere in the middle where they'd say, both, both for cars, to stick with that analogy, and guns, yeah, I think cars should be legal. But I think there should be rules and regulations around it. I think you should have to get a driver's license, and you should have to wear a seatbelt, and there should be a speed limit where you don't go over a certain number. And so it's like, Let's allow it, but regulate it to make it more reasonable. Same thing on guns. It's like, yeah, let's allow it. If you're a, a law-abiding citizen who's responsible enough, you can have a gun. You know, but there should be a process. There should be mental health checks. There should be a test on how to use it. There, it should only be, you shouldn't be allowed to get, you know, an RPG. You shouldn't be allowed to get... Um, fully automatic machine gun, like, there should be rules along with it, right? I think that's where most people would fall. Allow it, but regulate it strictly and try to keep the guns out of the hands of the wrong people. But, look, even having said all that, this is the uncomfortable but absolutely true point. If we lived in a country that just flat-out banned guns and confiscated all the guns, or even did... Maybe not confiscation, because that could lead to standoffs, which could lead to problems. But just did a voluntary gun buyback program. They were like, look, any gun you turn in, $1,000 you get. $1,000. If you somehow could get the number of guns in this country to zero, or somehow get the number to just very low, less than a million, you would absolutely see gun deaths just plummet. What do we have, like 32,000 gun deaths every year? and I think that includes homicides, suicides, accidents, etc., that number would just absolutely plummet. You'd probably have less than 1,000 every year. Like, it is true. 
if you were to basically ban guns and you could somehow implement that, it would end the gun crisis problem like that. That's just a fact. Doesn't mean you have to take that position. Doesn't mean you have to think like that's the way to go is to ban guns. But uh, again, I'm just making an empirical point here that that is what would happen. And we've seen it. Countries like Japan basically have no guns and there's like no gun deaths, you know? So that's what happens. Australia had a mass shooting. I think it was in 1996. They really cracked down on guns and now they have very few gun deaths. I mean, that's just, it is what it is. So anyway, the thing I don't like about this debate is the dishonesty where some people say, yes, I'm pro-gun, but also that'll make you safer and that'll, that leads to more peace. That's just provably untrue and don't believe any of the charlatans who tell you otherwise. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.